But back in the early 2000s, I was working for the Sisters of the Holy Cross, an international congregation that's based in South Bend, Indiana. And the leadership said, we'd really like to get our sisters more involved and more knowledgeable about human trafficking. And I thought, okay, this is a big learning curve for me too. Let's dive in. So we had many, many ways to learn how human trafficking presents in various areas of the world and how it requires such a diversity of responses. And that's something we're good at. Do you know? We we're, we really are kind of good at that. We, we are good to uh, take a look at a situation, study it, pray about it, think about what actions might be most successful, and then do it. And then go through that process again, deepening, and hopefully getting better at it and more effective. Uh, human trafficking presents a lot of opportunities for us to, again, be in relationship with those who are at the margins, to advocate for those who are at the margins, for those who don't have a voice, who really don't have a voice. I think for me, it's so compelling to think about young women, young boys, young men, who may be isolated and trapped in a situation that they can't get out of and not realize how many people share this experience or a similar one throughout the world, upwards of 40 million. And that they're everywhere, in rural areas, in urban areas, in every continent that we can, we can imagine. When I started this work, we hadn't had any reported cases in Iceland. <laughs> However, that is no longer the case. But so it's everywhere. It's very pervasive. We have people who can work pastorally with survivors of human trafficking. We have people who can work professionally. And we have people who can be there to support, walk with, be a presence. It's something I think that women religious are particularly well equipped to, to move into as an area of ministry and service. Mm -hmm.